What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is my quarterly end of the year graphic novel wrap up. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the graphic novels that I read in September, October, and December of 2019. I said in a couple videos that I wanted to implement graphic novels onto my channel and I asked you on the community tab what you would prefer so I thought it would be easier just to do a quarterly wrap up. So every four months expect a wrap up of the graphic novels that I read. Today I have 13 graphic novels to share with you. All of the titles will be down below if you would like to check them out. Let's get started. I'm going to start with September and I read three graphic novels and gave them all four stars. First, I read Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. I feel like I'm the only person on booktube that was late to the game, but I remember this being so hyped up in 2015 and 2016 and I am so glad that I picked it up because I really enjoyed it. It was so fun and I would have given it a five star if the ending wasn't so abrupt. Like honestly, the ending really just ruined things for me, but I really enjoyed it. Nimona is about a young shapeshifter and she meets this guy who is a villain and his name is Ballister and he basically kind of like teaches her to be a shapeshifter and Nimona is so spunky and very childlike and it, it was just really fun and it reminded me of Kim Possible kind of and kind of like Emperor's New Groove. I think that those are just things that I associate with like shapeshifting. Um, I don't know why, but I do. So if you've read it, let me know if you have those same feelings um, or if I just am making no sense. But I really enjoyed this and I would have given it a five star if the ending wasn't so abrupt. Next is the Babysitter's Club graphic novel. I got this off of Overdrive and I really just read it because I wanted to experience what it was like in a graphic novel. I ended up reading The Babysitter's Club for my Reading Childhood book video and I just wanted to read more of it and so that's why I read this and I gave it a four star because it was okay but I like where the story headed with Marianne. I like her as a character. She met a new girl from school. Um, she like just moved to town and it happened to be, and um, her mom happened to be someone that her dad was in love with in school or something like that. And they're trying to just figure out their story. And that, I don't know, like that was kind of cool. So I appreciated that story, but I didn't like the story where the girls were fighting. It just didn't feel genuine. So I gave, I guess now my official rating is like a three star because it's really not a four star. Um, so I suggest if you want to read them, to read them, but I just wasn't a fan. Next is Kate's Really Good at Hockey, and I read this a part of the Slapshot Readathon. This is a readathon that I hosted in October with my friend Becca from Becca with a Book, where you just read hockey books, and I read a lot of hockey books in that week, including this one, and I gave this a four star. I also received this on NetGalley from the publisher for an honest review. I reviewed it on Goodreads, but I will also review it here. And this is about a girl named Kate who's really good at hockey. This is a middle grade, and She's just really good at hockey and she goes to a hockey camp and she learns so much and she learns how to deal with girls that are being mean to her. And she gets closer to her grandmother who she thought doesn't know anything about hockey, but she happens to actually know a lot about it. And it was just really fun. I think if you like the movie, go figure, you should read this. But in general, I really enjoyed it. There were a lot of reveals at the end that I felt like were unnecessary and we only needed one or two, but there was just too much at the end. And I was like, okay, I already got this one part, but now why are you just throwing a lot of other stuff at me? There was one reveal that I felt like we could have just expanded on and kept that to the end, but those were just some of my creative Critiques. Snapdragon by Kate Lee. This comes out on February 4th. I received an arc of this from first second for review and I love this. It is a middle grade. I also have a video where I tried to do an overnight in my room and I read this. It will be up here but I really enjoyed this book. It has a lot of good representation. It is about a girl named Snap who is biracial 
Rachel. She presents more masculine and so I would consider her a tomboy. And she ends up befriending Jax, who is a witch in her town or rumored to be. And she's kind of a weird woman. Um, all the kids are afraid of her. Um, she sells roadkill online and she tends to her garden. And so Snap decides to befriend her. And it is such a nice story and it has so much good representation. Snap befriends a girl in her class who is a trans girl and she comes out throughout the book and I just loved that so much. Thinking about it makes me just want to tear up. Jax is a lesbian and I don't want to give too much away but I highly recommend to pick this up when it comes out on February 4th. It was so good and I highly recommend it. I just realized I was saying her name wrong, but Kat Lee might be familiar to you if you have read Lumberjanes. She is the co-writer and artist of Lumberjanes. Next, I read Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks, and I gave this a three star. I have a whole video talking about is this worth the hype, and it's technically a review, and I just kind of go hard on that book. It was a big disappointment. It was just a big disappointment and that's all I'm going to say because I kind of want you to watch that video more. It's spoiler free until the end, but really that book really disappointed me. If you want to know more of my thoughts, just go and watch that video because it's just all of my thoughts. And I don't want to repeat myself, but it was a big disappointment. I will say illustration wise, I really enjoyed the illustrations. They were really fun and the whole world really came to life. Next is a comic and this is Spell on Wheels and this was so interesting. It kind of felt like Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So basically it's all these girls who are witches and they are queer. They come back from like a night of partying or something. They just come back and they come back to their apartment and find that they've been robbed and they know exactly who it was. It was one of the girl's ex-boyfriends and he's trying to steal their magic and so he stole something and so the whole rest of the comic is them trying to find out who it was and they go through end up meeting this creature, I'll say, and this is basically a hot version of the beast from Beauty and the Beast. Like if he had abs and was like attractive basically. Um, so if that is your kink, read it. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm saying. I, that put me off a little bit, but I gave it a four star, honestly, just because it wasn't a five. So those were all our graphic novels I read in October. Now I'm moving on to December where I read seven graphic novels. <laughs> I was really trying to hit my goal of 80 books because I was so close to it and I did end up hitting it and getting to 81 and I discovered that Kindle Unlimited has graphic novels and comics. There's a deal right now on Kindle Unlimited where you get three months and you just have to pay 99 cents and then I figured out that they have comics and graphic novels and I spent all of the last day of 2019 just reading graphic novels and comics and it was fun and now I'm obsessed with it. But here are the seven graphic novels slash comics that I read in December. First is Queer Heroes. I don't really know how to categorize this. I don't even know if it is considered a comic or graphic novel, but it's a book with words and pictures. So I count it as a comic or graphic novel. Um, but this is also kind of like a coffee table book. I read this for review on NetGalley from the publisher and I gave it a three star. This is a nonfiction book that just shares queer heroes historical figures and icons and I just had a problem because it just felt like it was all LGBT and it wasn't the rest of the acronym and it was weird. I felt like there could have just been so many more people. I was introduced to new people but I just kind of felt like I had already known these people which was good for me. I've been lucky enough to take a queer history class as an elective in college so I did know the majority of people that were mentioned but there were some new faces that I I didn't know about but my biggest problem was that there was just LGBT there was no asexual people I wish they would have put Brendan Urie who is pansexual um, maybe Harry Styles this was a mixture of historical figures and pop culture icons I felt like there was just not 
enough people that were included. I feel like if they're calling it queer heroes, they should have added more diversity instead of just sticking to LGBT because then just call it LGBT heroes. So if you're looking to learn more about queer history, I do recommend this because I like that there was the mix of historical figures and pop culture icons like David Bowie, Lady Gaga. I love that she was included in that. And I just got to learn some things that I didn't know. So I do recommend it if you're looking to learn more about queer history because I do like that they included historical figures and pop culture icons like David Bowie and Lady Gaga. I was so glad that they added Lady Gaga, but just be aware that it's not inclusive. In the first week of December, I participated in the Queer Lit Readathon and I ended up reading As the Crow Flies by Melanie Gilman. I'm going to categorize this as a middle grade. Goodreads says as young adult, but I don't believe that at all. This is about a 13-year-old girl named Charlie who goes to a all-white Christian camp and she is a black queer girl and she is questioning her stance on faith and so she decides to go to this and she is the only person of color at her camp and I love me a camp story so I was like yes I am going to pick this up. I really enjoyed it. She meets a friend. It is so good. Melanie Gilman is a new to me author and I really like the way she illustrates. Charlie meets another girl who is queer and it's just so good. I really like the way that middle grade and queer books tackle faith. I do enjoy when queer and middle grade books talk about Christianity. I feel that it's really important for kids to learn this because at a young age sometimes you're skewed in the wrong way and told that homosexuality is really bad and so I just really enjoyed this because it was positive and the kids were realizing that this isn't something that they need to be told. If you like camping and you like hiking because I do a lot of hiking I highly recommend this. It was really good. Her illustrations are different from any artist that I've read from before so I really enjoyed this. So if you're looking for a new queer author and illustrator I highly recommend Melanie Gilman. I end up reading another one of her books this month, so I will be talking about that as well. Next, for the Very Merry Readathon, I read Stargazing by Jen Wang. I love Jen Wang. She's one of my favorite authors and illustrators, and I really enjoyed her book, The Prince and the Dressmaker, so I definitely needed to pick this up. I gave it a four star. It is a middle grade about these two girls, Moon and Christine. This book has a whole cast of Korean characters because Jen Wang is Korean, so this is own voices. I really enjoyed this. It is about Christine and Moon and Moon moves to Christine's town and she is just such a fun character. I loved her. She loves K-pop and she's just such a fun character. That's all I can really say. My only problem was that it didn't talk about stars a lot. I feel like if it was called stargazing it should have been more about astrology but it was more about these girls getting to know each other and Moon's character is just so good. She's raised by a single Korean mother and they're just just trying to make ends meet and it was just such a sweet book and it tackled a lot of things and I just really enjoyed it and my only complaint was that it didn't talk about stars a lot. I think there was like one scene but that was it and I feel like if it's called stargazing we should get more astrology but that was my only complaint. I really enjoyed this and I highly recommend it. Next I read Stage Dreams by Melanie Gilman and I ended up giving this a four star. This is a queer western following a female female romance between a queer cis woman and a trans woman and it was amazing. I never thought I needed a western before and it was just awesome and I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't love it because I don't really love westerns but it was just a really fun read. All right next I read another graphic novel for review and this is this book has already been published but it's being republished for the 10th anniversary and this is Lola a ghost story. I love this. This is a middle grade about a boy named Jesse who can see ghosts. He can see the ghost of his cousin who died and he just hasn't told anyone and his grandmother dies and he is very, he is grieving it and I could relate to that so much because when I was a kid my grandmother died and I was really close with her as Jesse was close to his and oh my god this was just so good. The only complaint I have is the color choice that the illustrator decided to go with. The whole book is orange and I kind of wish it was more dark because the cover, the cover is like dark blue and I kind of was expecting that and the orange kind of just threw me off but I really enjoyed the story. And next I read 
volumes one and two of Lumberjanes and gave them both five stars. I love me a camp story and it was just so fun. Ripley is the best character. This was just so fun and I honestly liked it a lot better than Nimona, but this was so fun and I just can't wait to binge the whole series because it was so fun. And that's really all I have to say. It is just a camp story. Um, it's an all-girls camp and shit ends up going on. This reminded me so much of like a female version of the Scooby-Doo gang and I loved it so much. And last, I read All My Friends Are Dead, and this was honestly just because it was on Kindle Unlimited and Lumberjanes was too, and this was so funny. <laughs> I just had a lot of fun reading it, but I gave it a four star just because it wasn't a five. So those were the graphic novels that I read for the last four months of the year. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you've read any of these, let me know in the comments so we can discuss it. Thank you all for watching. I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me there. Definitely turn on my post notifications and subscribe if you haven't. I hope you're all having a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.